But what I have difficulty with is this, not, not with respect to goals. I'm for a low-carbon future. I believe that we're going to move in that direction, and I will support that goal. I do not support, however, a cap-and-trade system in which some 400 pages of the House bill is uh, about cap-and-trade, and especially trade, establishing a new trading system of a carbon securities market. And let me describe why. In my judgment, there are better ways to deal with these issues than establish a very substantial carbon securities trading system in which the biggest investment banks in the country and the biggest hedge funds in the country sink their teeth into these marketplaces and, and make massive amounts of money. And my, my profound feeling about that is we have seen now a decade in which many of these markets have been manipulated. Many of these markets have failed to work at all with respect to the market signals of supply and demand. And I have very little interest in consigning our future with respect to a carbon-restrained future to a trading system of carbon securities that the biggest trading companies in the world will be involved in. And it won't be very long before we will have derivatives, we'll have swaps, we'll have synthetic uh, swaps, you name it. We'll have all of them. And it'll be a field day for speculation, which I think is not in the interest of this country. Now, let me just describe something that I think might be a harbinger uh, of, of this concern, uh, or a harbinger of things to come, I should say. Here's actual oil prices. You all remember what happened uh, to oil prices. They went from down uh, $60 a barrel up to $147 a barrel in day trading last July. Even as the price of oil was going like this, the best experts looking at supply and demand were implying with this green line, here's where the price of oil would go. They said, well, here's where we think the price of oil is going to be, straight on across, all the way up. Here's what they suggested, May 07, here's the price. Well, the fact is the price went like that. Here's what they suggested, January 08, here's the price, they say. The price went like that. Now, why is it you have an oil futures market in which supply and demand doesn't determine where the the line goes. Price goes right off the chart and yet supply was up and demand was down. So if you like this market, if you like what we've seen in the oil futures market with speculators engaged in about two-thirds or three-fourths of all the trades in which they're trading 20 to 25 times the amount of oil that's produced every single day and creating an orgy of speculation to show a red line like this and by the way it went right off down like a roller coaster and the same people that made the money going up made the money going down. If you like that sort of thing, you're going to love the trade piece in cap and trade because we're going to create a big, perhaps trillion dollar market for carbon securities. And it won't be long before the same investment banks, the same hedge funds, and they'll all be engaged in trading derivatives and swaps and you name it. Well, I happen to think that makes no sense at all. New York Times said, managing emissions has become one of the fastest growing specialties in financial services. Investment banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley have rapidly expanded their carbon businesses. Big investment banks, very interested. I'm told, by the way, most of the large investment banks right now have created their carbon trading units. Charlotte Observer, uh, Firms such as Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley already have carbon desks and teams. Peopling those carbon desks are the former commodities traders or former securitization or structured finance professionals like the many who've lost jobs in Wachovia, now Wells Fargo, and Bank of America. As Congress gears up for a debate about cap and trade, the New York Times says in a news story, uh, programs to limit greenhouse gas emissions. Resumes from Wall Street or ex-Wall Streeters are flooding into the nation's few carbon trading shops. Chris Leeds, the head, emissions of, uh, head of emissions trading, carbon trading, in Merrill Lynch said, carbon could become one of the fastest growing markets ever with volumes comparable to credit derivatives inside of a decade. Lewis Redshaw, head of environmental markets at Barclays Capital, says carbon will be the world's biggest commodity market 
and it could become the world's biggest market overall. So, do we really want to sign up to a future in which we can sign the question of constraining carbon and doing what we should do to protect this planet by creating a do we really want to do that by creating a a carbon market a carbon securities market that in my judgment would likely subject us to the same vision of the last decade with unbelievable speculation movements and markets that seem completely disconnected from supply and demand that's not a future that I want. Now, there are other ways of capping carbon and addressing these issues. I'm for capping carbon. I'm for a low-carbon future. But in my judgment, those who would bring to the floor of the United States Senate a replication of what has been done in the House with over 400 pages describing the cap and quote, trade, unquote, piece of restraining carbon uh, will find very little favor from me and I expect from some others as well. There are better other and more direct ways to do this to protect our planet. But uh, I, I'm, I've been to the floor many, many, many times talking about what has happened with credit default swaps, what's happened with CDOs, what's happened with the oil futures market, on and on and on. If what has happened gives anybody confidence, then they are in a deep sleep and just don't understand it. And again, I come back to the the chart I showed a moment ago, the head of emissions trading in Merrill Lynch saying carbon could become one of the fastest growing markets ever with volumes comparable to credit derivatives. I mean, think of this, the, the unbelievable volumes of credit derivative swaps that most people couldn't even pronounce and didn't know existed. And turns out we had notional values of trillions and then tens of trillions of dollars and worldwide hundreds of trillions of dollars. Frankly, I think that is not in the country's interest to establish a new financial market to have the same players engage in the same games that gamble on this country's future. So, Mr. President, I think two things. Number one, there's a piece of legislation that is ready to come to the floor passed by the Energy Committee that moves in the direction of climate change. We ought to, it seems to me, get the benefit of that legislation and pass, it to the, pass that bill along to the President of the United States for signature. Maximizes renewable energy, does a lot of things that, that will dramatically impact our carbon footprint. That's number one. Number two, those in the Senate who are working very hard and, and talking about uh, the issue of climate change and how we might want to cap carbon and what kind of a low carbon future that we, will, we might be able to do should understand at least there are some of us, and I certainly speak only for myself, who believe that cap and trade, quote unquote, around the trade is something that makes no sense to me. I don't believe we ought to embrace cap and trade. I think we ought to embrace a cap with different approaches. And so, Mr. President, I'll have more to say about this, but I did want to at least explain as those who are writing this bill and attempting to take that which was produced in the House with 400 and some pages on cap and trade, uh, I, I want them to understand that some of us will resist, resist very aggressively the trade side of cap and trade. Mr. President, I yield the floor and I make a point of order that a quorum is not present.